Hey there guys and welcome back to Pokemon Yellow. In the last episode we pretty much cleared out the Team Rocket base in Saladon City's game corner. We got the stealth scope so now we can go to the Pokemon Tower in Lavender Town. And look it's our rival good old uh, Daniel, what's his name? What brings you here? Your Pokemon don't look dead? Yeah I always find that a little weird that apparently Pokemon can die. Because you know, they say that it's possible but in the games your Pokemon never ever dies. And uh, in the anime, it's never really brought up all that much. Anyway, he has a Fero now. Luckily, Pikachu has Thunderbolt, so this really shouldn't be that much of a problem there. We, Damn, that's just overkill, Pikachu. But I like it. It's about to use Shelder. Yeah, let's send a Water-type out against Pikachu. Genius. I mean, surely he has to have other Pokémon. But let's get Ivysaur in here, because he definitely needs to experience a bit more than Pikachu does. And... He's another critical hit. I am on a roll today. Level 28. Can we finally get Razor Leaf, please? Bloody hell, when does he learn that move? Vulpix. Well, at least this one makes sense, but I'm gonna just switch to War Turtle instantly. Then why am I so much higher leveled than he is? Ooh, quick attack. Yeah, because that's... That's a difference maker right there. Alright, Bubble Beam. Easy one hit KO. Awesome. Ah, Daniel, your team is so terrible. Sandshrew. See, you should have sent this thing out against Pikachu instead of freaking Shelder. Damn, he seems to have definitely spent more time training his Fero and not so much everything else. That's never a good thing, you kinda gotta keep your team equal. And then Eevee. Ah, uh, Ivysaur, I guess. See, his Fero is the same level as his Eevee. Fero is his freaking best Pokémon. Although, I actually would have thought he would have evolved his Eevee by now. I guess maybe he doesn't do that until the next battle. Anyway, let's just whoop him real quick. Yeah, growl, because that's totally gonna weaken my Vine Whips. It actually does, starting from Diamond and Pearl onwards, because then it's a physical move, but not in this generation. And the Quick Attack. See, if you, maybe you would have used Quick Attack the entire time, you could have maybe defeated Ivysaur. Maybe. And then I'm reaching. What, you stinker? I took it easy on you too. If anyone was taking it easy, well actually no, I wasn't really taking it easy, I was just crushing him, I just caught a Cubone. Then why didn't you use it in battle? You had, uh, Eevee, Fero, Shelder, Vulpix. Yeah, you had five Pokemon, where is this Cubone of yours? It didn't get sent to the box because you don't have a full team. So where is it? Did it faint already? Is that why you didn't use it? We don't know if the way would go, Silphscope might be able to unmask them. Oh boy! Well, luckily we have such a thing. And, oh, we don't even get to see the ghost anymore. Well, here's a Ghastly. I guess... You could catch one and use it if you want to, but it's really... kind of a pointless Pokémon in this generation, I feel. Because... There are no good ghost or poison type moves in this generation at all. So if you're gonna be using a Gengar, you're pretty much only gonna be running non-stab moves on it, like Psychic, Thunderbolt... Uh, I don't think it gets much else, actually. Not a whole lot of other special moves it gets. So... You're probably just better off using Alakazam instead. I mean, sure, it has really good special, but its move pool is pretty crap. So there are better Pokemon you could be using. I mean, I guess it's still technically immune to normal and fighting, which is kind of helpful because normal type moves are on a lot of Pokemon in Generation 1. Because Body Slam is really good and everyone, nearly everything can learn it. Hyper Beam is actually decent in this generation as well. I'm, I kind of want them to bring back the whole Hyper Beam thing, where there's no recharge turn if it knocks out an opponent. Because then we could actually, you know, see stuff using moves like Frenzy Plant and Blast Burn and Rock Wrecker and all that stuff. Because they make all these moves, but they're so crap that no one ever uses them. I mean, I guess people might use them on their in-game team or something, but in competitive battling, those moves see no use whatsoever. I mean, can you imagine, like, Shell Smash Rock Wrecker Crustle? That'd be awesome. I guess. 
Although maybe like a Mega Charizard Y Blast Burn in the sun, that might be a little broken. Maybe. And, uh... Yeah, nothing else would really be that broken, I think. And maybe like, uh... Mega Pinsir or Mega Salamence Giga Impact or something, that might also be pretty broken. Anyway, Pikachu, why did you go down? I guess Ghastly's special is also pretty off the charts. I guess, I mean, Gengar's special in Gen 1 is, I think, base 130. And if Ghastly's special is also the same as his special attack in later generations, then that's... I think that's like a 100 or something. Ghastly actually has amazing special attack for an unevolved Pokemon. It's pretty damn impressive. Anyway, level 29 for more turtle. And I don't know what the hell, is she holding like a boomerang or something? As a kid, I always thought these trainers were weird as hell, and I kind of still feel that way. I mean, they look like a jinx. They're holding some sort of boomerang thing, so Australian jinx wearing weird headdresses. It's confusing. Anyway, run away because I don't want to fight all these damn ghastlies. Ah boy, ooh, ooh, item ball, I want that. I don't know what it is, but I want it. Be cursed with me, qua. Well, no. I, I rather, really, really, really rather not, let me... She looks like she's wearing like a sunflower hat or something. These trainers make no sense. Anyway, another ghastly, because, you know, it's, it's the only ghost-type evolution line in the entire game, so, of course, they're all gonna have that. It's a little... I don't know, I find it a little odd. I mean, they make the ghost-type, and then they only make three Pokémon that have that type. I mean, with Dragon, it makes a little more sense, because, you know, dragons are supposed to be quasi-legendary, I suppose. But what's so special about ghosts? Really not that much. And then in Generation 2 they only add one ghost, which I also find a little weird. It really took them until Generation 3 to really get ghosts going. Because then they added uh, Sableye and Duskull, Dusclops, Shuppet, Bayonet. Actually, I think that's all the ghosts they added in Gen 3, so that's still not that many. It took until Generation 4 to get more than 10 ghost types. Actually, hang on, there's also Shedinja. Everyone always forgets about Shedinja. So I guess there were technically 10 ghost types in Generation 3, but still, that's pretty pathetic considering we probably had about, I don't know, 100 water types in Gen 3. Okay, maybe that's a little much, but definitely more than 70 water types in Generation 3, I'm betting. Anyway, uh, can we avoid her? What do we have here? HP up. Well, I guess that'll... I can use that. Uh, Ivysaur. I guess. I don't really know why. Alright, this one. I'm assuming she has a ghastly. Beat me not. Well, I'm not really inclined to using physical violence against people, but... Uh, thanks for the warning. Maybe. Oh yeah, Nido King. Put Nido King up front. Uh, Rock Slide. See, it's a little tricky because most of my Pokémon only really have moves that are either of their stab types or normal type moves. Normal type moves can't touch Ghastly, so I'm stuck using Bubble Beam or Vine Whip or Thunderbolt or whatever, which aren't really that effective either because of Ghastly's high special. Nido King, on the other hand, has Rock Slide, which is physical. And Ghastly isn't immune to it, so it makes him really quite handy in taking all these ghosts out. Same thing goes for Charmeleon and Dig. Those are really the only two moves I have that can probably one-hit KO with these Ghastlies. Mainly because War Turtle and Ivysaur aren't as powerful as Nido King and Charmeleon, but also because their moves are just attacking the wrong defensive stat. Uh, nothing up here. I'm a little confused with having graves in a tower. I mean, I'm assuming that these gravestones aren't just gravestones, I'm assuming there's something buried underneath them, which is what you usually do with gravestones. 
But how do you bury something in between the floors of a building? Is what I'm wondering. Because usually floors or ceilings aren't that thick. I mean, there's a reason they bury people in the ground, because there's plenty of room to go down. Not so much in between floors of a building. So I'm wondering, are there actually Pokemon corpses under the floorboards? Or are there just are they just gravestones with Pokemon names on them and then just nothing else? Or maybe I'm just really overthinking this, that's also a possibility. Anyway... Come child, let's seal this space with white magic. You can rest here. So now they're adding magic into the Pokemon games? That's a little... I'm not really sure that's an area you wanna go into. Oh look, Pikachu's back. And he's... Not really liking this place. I gotta say, the eerie music always kinda creeped me out as a kid as well. Lavender Town, pretty creepy, spooky place. Imagine being in your bed, playing your Game Boy Color under the sheets. Actually, hang on, that wouldn't work because you wouldn't see shit in that case. Uh, playing your Game Boy Color with the night light on or something and then just hearing that eerie music all the time. It's enough to give you nightmares. Anyway, Nido King kicking ass taking names as usual. Ha. Yes, ha, indeed. Bloody hell. Not even a single Haunter yet either. Or Cubone. I mean, at least you can catch more than one kind of Pokemon in here, but uh, Ghastly is really the only common one. I don't know what the percentages are for running into a Haunter or a Cubone, but they're pretty damn low. Anyway, I might as well beat up all these challengers. Uh, channeler, channelers, bloody hell. There we go, there's a Haunter. Well, probably gonna die to one rock slide all the same. But still, look, that's the evolved form of Ghastly. You know, I always found it kind of funny how Ghastly could use Ice Punch, Fire Punch, and Thunder Punch, seeing as how it has no hands. I mean, it makes sense for Haunter and Gengar to learn those, but why Ghastly? Unless he's just like bitch slapping people with his tongue, I mean, I guess that could work. It's not really punching. But again, probably just overthinking it. Hey, another Haunter. Finally, we're getting into slightly more challenging opponents if Nidoking didn't outspeed and one-hit KO all of them. Oh, crap. And Nightshade, that's not much of a problem. I can take... four? Gotta do basic math, my old nemesis. Four times twenty-three, four times twenty is eighty. Yeah, I can take four of those and still live. So that's good. And Rock Slide. Oh, crap, it lives. Okay, that animation for Lick totally does not look like he's licking me at all. It looks like he's, I don't know, spitting goop at me or something. I mean, I get that the animations are limited, but it just doesn't look a damn thing. Like, like Thunderbolt, that actually kind of looks like you're hitting him with electricity with all the little sparks flying off. And we need to King's paralyzed now. That's a bit of a bummer. Gasp. Certainly a talkative lot, these channelers. Luckily, we're still close enough to the healing space, so might as well go back a bit. And run into probably like 10 Ghastlies on the way there. I will say, Ghastly's yellow sprite? Perfection. That is exactly what Ghastly looks like. They nailed that one. Especially considering Ghastly's sprite in red and blue is basically just a big ball of pixels with eyes in it. Doesn't look a damn thing like him. But this, this is pretty much exactly like Ghastly's official artwork. So, good job, Pokemon Yellow Sprite designers. You made a sprite that actually resembles the Pokemon it's supposed to be. Excellent job. They even got the color scheme right and everything. Which is also something you rarely see. Anyway, you have more Ghastly's. Well, I don't really know if his tongue is purple. I think it's more like a lightish pink, but... Still, the black body, the purple gas, they nailed that. Good job. And maybe the little purple in the eyes, that's also not really there, but I'll I'll take that. More Ghastlies. I am really getting tired of these. We must have fought nearly two dozen Ghastlies already in this episode. 
Ugh, bloody hell. You know, for someone who really likes it when you face a large variety of Pokémon like me, this area is hell. I guess maybe that's what they were going for, because it is supposed to be like the spooky ghost burial tower, so you're supposed to feel like you want to die, maybe. But this is just overdoing it. I mean, give one of these guys a drowsy or an abra or something. Throw some psychic types in here. X accuracy, that's going to be tossed pretty much instantly because those things are just dead weight. Take up space in my bag that I can use for other stuff. No need for that. All right, you there. KKKKK. Oh, we're okay then? I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Is that like some sort of creepy laughter? Ooh, that's gotta be... Only have one Pokemon and it's not even a Haunter. Bloody hell. Oh well, I'm still not running out of Rock Slide PP. Oh wait, of course I healed him up. That must have also restored his PP. Makes sense. My bad. Forgot about that. Nido King really getting a lot of experience in this place. Alright, moving on. Oh, bloody hell. Still no Cubone or Haunter. Ooh, level 26, though. That is pretty decent. Ghastly Evolves level 25, so if you catch that, level it up once, you immediately got yourself a Haunter. And another one. Level 26, I guess. Maybe that's the level you encounter them at at this floor. But still, not interested in Ghastly. I mean, Ghastly, Haunter, and Gengar didn't really get all that amazing until Generation 4. When they finally got to use Shadow Ball properly. And Sludge Bomb. A couple other moves as well. I mean, sure, they were still... I think in competitive battling in Gen 1, 2, and 3, Gengar was still pretty decent. It just... wasn't as good as other stuff. Come on, Nido King. You're getting your ass kicked by a ghastly paralysis, confusion, he does not want me to attack. It's a good thing genders aren't a thing yet, because otherwise he'd probably try and attract me too. And can you imagine having to battle with a Pokémon that's paralyzed, confused, and attracted? You'd have like a 25% chance of actually getting a successful attack off. That would be hell. Something fell out. Of what? Two steps, another ghastly. Jesus Christ. Level 27, damn, they're getting higher and higher. No wonder uh, Daniel was in here trying to catch something. These Ghastlies are higher leveled than his entire team. Also, rare candy, I'll take that. Might come in handy at some point. I don't know, I guess I could use it immediately, but I also feel it kind of hanging on to it. Because you do kind of want to use a rare candy just after a Pokémon is leveled up. So you don't really waste experience. For example, if you have a Pokémon that pretty much only needs to beat one more Pokémon to level up and you use a rare candy on that Pokémon, that's just a waste. Because you could be getting way more experience for that thing. Anyway, here's the silly ghost sprite. And it's a Marowak ghost. This is actually really a really weird encounter. You can't catch this thing because it's dead, it's a ghost. You don't ever fight any other dead Pokémon in any of the other games, this is just... One of those examples of Generation 1 being weird. Anyway, easy as hell. Expected more from that, the ghost was the restless soul of Cubone's mother. The mother's soul was calmed. It departed to the afterlife. See, the whole afterlife thing, I don't know, it just feels kind of weird to me. It doesn't feel like it belongs in a Pokemon game. Anyway, finally done with all that stuff. Uh, I guess War Turtle is still up front, we'll stick with him. Anyway, it's Team Rocket again. Grandpa here wanted to complain, so we're setting him straight. Are they abusing an elderly gentleman? Invisible or prepared to fight, that's not how their motto goes. Anyway, let's go, punks. Meow. Okay, we'll easily whoop that thing. With War Turtle's Bubble Beam. Oh, he's actually faster, and then he goes for Growl. You had one chance, and you go for Growl. Not even scratch your Slash or Fury Swipes or whatever, and of course, go for another. Because War Turtle is definitely inclined to use physical attacks against you. 
and then we have Arbok. They finally evolved their Pokémon. I'm actually pretty sure in the anime the Ekans and Coughing evolved well before they got to Lavender Town. I think. I don't really remember the first season all that well. I do miss Arbok and Weezing, though. Those were always pretty cool. Those were the OG Team Rocket Pokémon. Anyway, Charmeleon probably take them down easy enough. Damn, that's a depressed-looking Weezing. Hello again, as far as sprites go, actually resembles Weezing pretty well. I mean, maybe they intentionally posed it like that so you can't see the skull and crossbones thing. But still, pretty solid Weezing sprite, I'd say. I've definitely seen worse, like the red and blue one. Looks like Team Rocket's blasting off again. Away they go. Alright, hey there, old man. Ah, oh, you came to save me. Thank you, but I came here of my own free will. I came to calm the soul of Cubone's mother, which you didn't actually do. My friend's gone to Yeflav. Yef, you have me to thank for that. I must thank you for your kind concern. Follow me to my home, Pokemon House, at the foot of this tower. Can you imagine living in a house in the Pokemon world, calling it Pokemon House? That is just so unimaginative. And now he instantly knows my name. Without your love for your Pokemon. I think this may help your quest. Receive the Poke Flute. That is just what we needed. Sleeping Pokemon will spring awake. Works on all sleeping Pokemon. Like the Snorlax blocking our path from Celadon City. So, now that we have the Poke Flute, we can go and move on to new areas. But first of all, there is a gym we have to fight. The Celadon Gym. But gym number four, the grass type gym. Charmeleon probably gonna have a field day with that one. And we don't need the Silph Scope anymore, so let's get rid of that. Kind of. That is something that has kind of always bummed me out the one use key items that are only good for one thing and then never used again. Also, putting the Max Potion away, because we won't be needing that until the Pokemon League. Same thing goes for the Ethers. I mean, I don't really need those in regular gameplay. Those are really only that useful when you're going up against the Elite Four and stuff, because you can't heal in between and you're likely to run out of PP at some point. So there we go. We got all that sorted out. Let's heal up the gang, because I'm pretty sure that doesn't automatically happen after finishing the Pokémon Tower. And then we'll go back to Celadon City and earn ourselves another Gym Badge. Could probably be a little bit of a tricky gym, because Charmeleon is really the only thing I have to rely on in there. And maybe Nidoking's brute force. But we'll see in the next episode.